Well, good evening. Welcome to Concord Baptist Church Bible Study. Everybody's running late tonight, so we're just going to go ahead and start, read the Word of God, and uh, we'll get the girls to sing here real quick that are here, and then we'll be going to Luke chapter 16. Amen. So we'll get Tommy to pray for us. Bro, Tom, if you'll play, pray. Grace, have Father, I'm thankful for this day. Lord, thank you for your love and kindness, your mercy, and grace. And just thank you for allowing us to be here tonight to read your word, Lord. I just pray that you give people travel mercies on their way in tonight, Lord. And that the people out listen on Facebook, Lord, I hope they get a blessing from your word tonight. We'll be sure to give you all the praise, honor, and glory. Hold the precious name of Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you pray and ask these things. Amen. 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 <laughs> what I want to do tonight with the young people when they get here. So I'm going to ask them what they believe about hell and about heaven. I and I was going to get it's them funny, to. It's funny you said that. That's the same thing I was like. I was going to ask them. That's all right. I was going to ask them to uh, tell me what they believe. They know what we believe. They know what I believe. I don't preach it. But I want to know what they believe and where they stand. Amen. So, uh, Jasmine, are you in. Megan, ready? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where the cleansing from sin I cried. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. I am so wondrously saved from sin. Jesus so sweetly abides with him there at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Precious fountain that saves from sin. I am so glad I have entered in. There Jesus saves me and keeps me clean. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge into them he may complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood of Glory to his name. Amen. All right. Uh. All right. Give me a moment here, and uh... the gate. The number one thing is, friend, don't you be left outside the gate. Okay. 
Oh, come on. Can you get that thing to play? That's your thing. Sometimes our eyes with tears run over when pain and sorrow is our fate. But when this race is found. shall sing. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 19, thy dead men shall live. Together with my dead body shall they arise, awake and sing, ye that dwell in dust. For thy dew is as a dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. That's our hope. The Christian hope is a resurrection. Amen. We thank God for that. Uh, glad to see y'all made it. Here's what happened to Kim? She wasn't feeling well. Oh, okay. Yeah, last night she kicked her foot on a tree, and she lost to a tree last night. Oh, how lovely. <laughs> Good to see you, Samantha. You get you start your job? Not yet. The, uh, the big boss isn't in to hire people, so I can't put in my application yet. Amen. Hey, hmm. Well, Jasmine got accepted into college tonight. That was a blessing. Looking forward to it. Uh, <laughs> it was. Over by the house. 
And uh, just a little warning, young folks, especially uh, a particular one. We don't use that kind of language here. Yes, sir. I you understand? Language, you know what? You know what that kind of language is? That's a weak mind trying to express itself strongly. In other words, a lack of education caused people to use words that way because they need to feel something. So don't let them think you have no education. All right. Yes, All right. Hey, man, glory to God. Hallelujah. I was. Uh, I was going to read out of Luke chapter 16 tonight, and I will eventually. But I want to ask you a question tonight, each one individually, all right? And uh, I know what I believe. You know what I believe. You've heard me preach what I believe. Amen? But I want to know what you believe. I want to start with Samantha. What do you believe about heaven or hell? Yes, believe about it. Do you believe, like my question is, do you believe that there's a literal hell that people die without Christ go to? Yeah, I do. All right. And do you believe that there's a heaven that people receive Christ go to? Yes. Okay. Now, you don't have to answer, but do you know which way you're headed? I don't think we really know until the end. Okay, now... According to the scripture, if you believe that there's a hell and you believe that there's a heaven, turn around, Megan. If scripture says, these things have I written unto you, 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life. If you've got to wait till you die, then you don't know whether you're going to make it to heaven or hell. But there are prerequisites in here to go to heaven and the scripture tells you what they are uh what about you Derek? yes i believe there's a heaven and hell and people don't accept christ as their savior and don't accept the way they're heading like they can change the way how they walk and talk all right. Well, you see, a lot of people have the idea that if you quit doing certain things, you go to heaven. And if you don't quit, you go to hell. That's not the truth. The reason people die and go to hell is because they have a sin nature. How about you, Miss Vic? Yeah. I'm looking at evidence and hopefully I'll have the humility to go wherever it leads. Say that again. <laughs> She's not sure. I'm looking at evidence, and I'm hoping I'll have the humility to go wherever the evidence leads. Okay, and what are you using for to find that? To find, what kind of evidence are you looking at? Um, mostly apologetics. I don't believe evolution. You don't believe what? Evolution. Right. I don't think I swung from a tree. I might look like a monkey, act like a monkey, but I, I didn't come from a monkey. Amen. <laughs> Amen. But the evidence, apologetics, uh, Robbie Zechariah, who passed away, he was good at pol apologetics. I mean, he really was a very smart man. But you're not going to find the answer in apologetics. You're going to find it in the Word of God. Amen. And the first thing you have to do is you're going to have to settle in your heart whether or not this King James Bible is the Word of God or not. It's either a truth or a lie. There's no gray area. All right. What about you, Mr. Tim, evangelist, sir? Oh, absolutely. I absolutely believe that there is a heaven and there's a hell. Amen. You weren't so sure when you first came to work. That's true. Amen. I got saved. When was it, Tommy? You know, I can't remember. I can't wait to baptize you because uh, I might have the opportunity to slip and fall on top of you while you're under. <laughs> Anyway, anybody else want to interject anything? Yeah. I believe that there is a hell that people who don't believe or people who know but don't um, accept God is going to go to for eternity. And eternity is a long time and they're going to suffer forever. And people who are saved and know God and accept God are going to be with 
him for um, for eternity. Yeah. Constant. Well, time. like they say, everybody is entitled to their own opinion. But what about the scripture? All right. Uh, I use different illustrations to prove to you that this Bible is true. The first one is God wrote his law in your heart. It's Amen. called a conscience. Yep. Amen. Right. And that conscience tells you that it's wrong to lie. It's wrong to steal. Your parents didn't have to teach you that at first. And when the first lie you ever told, you knew it was wrong because your heart condemned you. And the thing is, nobody taught you how to lie. You knew how. Because the Bible says we're all liars. And we're liars by nature. Amen. Another illustration I use is the garden illustration that you've heard me use many times here. I ask the question, and I'll ask again tonight. You're walking along a creek or a river, beautiful flowers, trees blooming, springtime, birds singing. You see a rolling meadow, meadow, and you look at that, and inside here, inside, you go, I could live here forever. It's so beautiful. People plant gardens in their backyard. Why? Because it gives them a sense of peace. Over in England, the castles that I visited, every one of them had a garden. They had a place. They had a body of water. They had manicured hedges. And they had apple trees that weren't really trees. They, they put up a vine, like a, like a grapevine, and they started the tree up. And then as it started the branch, they tied the branches off to the wire and it, it went out this way. And apples would come off that big, beautiful red apples. They had a place, a shelter, sitting in front of the body of water where the queen could sit. The king, when they were troubled, they would walk through the garden. Why? Because when you're around that beauty, there's a peace comes over you and you don't even know why. You don't know why. But the Bible tells us why. Sometime in the near future, Lord willing, I want to write a book called It's Not the Garden. You see, what's missing is that fellowship that you had with God in Adam. And man subconsciously is trying to get back to that garden by planting his own. But it's not the garden. It's the God of the garden. When Adam sinned in Genesis and disobeyed God, he said, In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Adam lived to be 930 years old, but spiritually he died that day. So the Bible says in Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man, sin entered the world and death by sin. So death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. Every one of us. Now the flesh, because minus the, the regenerating power of the Holy Ghost, you're, you're one part dead until you get born again. Amen. But you're one part dead. And you're searching in here. You're looking for something to, to bring you peace. You're thinking, if, if I could use, just do this, I'd be happy. If I could just get that, I'd be happy. I just rented a Dodge ram uh hemi tonight because i need to use it tomorrow pickup truck that thing is loaded it's really nice amen after driving that little s10 around amen yeah. it is loaded it's nice but you know that wouldn't make me happy but for about six months or the first few payments so every time you tried something new after you've achieved that, you were just as miserable as when you started. Man is missing something. And I use the illustration, it's like a fire. It's never full. I take that wood stove at home, when I've got it going, 
I mean, U.S. Tommy, Tim, they brought a pile of wood over there. I burned every bit of it. That thing didn't, uh, that thing didn't quit burning till it was all gone. I mean, day in and day out. And you know what? It never got full. Every time I open it, I'd have to throw some more logs in. But that's how your life is. It's not getting full. And you're not happy. And you think you're going to find it through education? You think you're going to find it through riches? You think you're going to find it in sex? Or lust? Or a new car? I mean, I come home with that. Jasmine was all excited. <laughs> She'd been wanting a truck ever since she rode with Vic. <laughs> Guess what? She ain't getting one. <laughs> What's course she paid for? <laughs> she better get a college education, go make some money and buy her own. She wants one. <laughs> Number one, I don't want to pay eight, nine hundred dollars a year to the county for taxes on it. I don't want to make seven, eight hundred dollar payments a month. I don't want to pay the uh, full coverage insurance it's going to cost on it. Hey, Amen. Nope. So I'm not going to go out and work for three weeks out of the month to pay for one ride to work. Hey, Amen. My little S10 gets me from point A to point B. Hopefully when my avalanche gets finished and gets out the shop, it'll carry me from point A to point B. Hey, Amen. And I don't have any payments. But you're not going to get happy or be happy by the things that the world has to offer. Amen. The Bible says, when my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Amen. Amen. The best friend you could ever have is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. People, the Bible says that God visits the iniquity of the fathers unto the third and fourth generation of the children. Amen. That hate him. And those people that hate him, that sin. The children are paying the price for their sin. What your parents did. How your parents act. Whether they brought you up under the nurture and admonition of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or what they put before Christ. You know, whatever you put before the Lord is your God. My son and them were in Little League and football. And when I got saved, they started doing it on Wednesday nights. Do you know where I'm supposed to be on Wednesday night? I wasn't a preacher then. Church. Why? Because that's when the body was meeting. You put anything before Christ, that's your God. Amen. Amen. And so people are looking for peace in their life. You won't find it laying out of church. Why? God said he chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that would believe. Amen. And God said he has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. I asked a man one time, this black man, it's a friend. I asked him where he was going when he died. And he said he hoped to go to heaven. I said, if you're hoping, you ain't a knowing. If you ain't a knowing, you ain't a going. But I asked him something. I said, how do you know that you're your parents' child? I don't remember being born. Do you? Nope. No. I had a witness. At the hospital, they gave my parents a birth certificate to show me later on that I was born to Mr. and Mrs. Frank Townsend at Somerset Hospital in Somerville, New Jersey. On October 6, 1952. That's the only reason I know. These two girls here are adopted. We didn't have a choice with them. I mean with Frankie and Tab. We had a choice with them. We wanted them. I don't know why. <laughs> no, I'm not joking. But we wanted them. I tell the story about the night we picked Jasmine up in Savannah, Georgia. And she's eight and a half months old, sitting in the car seat in the back of the avalanche. And I'm thinking, I'm 51 years. What the heck am I doing? Did I just make an awful mistake? I got an eight and a half month baby sitting in the back there next to my wife. 
And all of a sudden she went, eh, and it melted my heart. Amen. You probably don't think that now. Huh? <laughs> so I said, we have a birth certificate. First John 5, 13, when you get born again, that's your birth certificate. But you know what else? This black man said this to me because I wanted to tell him about the birth certificate. And he says, you know how's I know, preacher? I said, how's you know? He says, because eyes begin to resemble. I begins to resemble. And you know what? When the Lord Jesus Christ saves your soul, God becomes your father. You're going to start resembling. Him. Amen. You're going to stop the cussing. You're going to stop the drugs. You're going to stop your fornication and adultery, or whatever you might be in. You see, the reason people put off being born again is because they think if they get saved, they can't have any more fun. So if they stay in limbo, they're able to do what they feel like and not have much of a conscience toward it. Amen. You say, well, you don't know my past, preacher. You don't know their past. Megan and her sister had a rough past. But God had an interest in her. He needed somebody to torment me. <laughs> so in Luke chapter 16, I want to read you an account. It says there was a, verse 19, there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. And fared sumptuously every day. I mean, he was rich. He could eat whatever he wanted. And it says he was clothed in purple and fine linen. I mean, he had the name brand clothes, you know, Tommy Helfinger and all the other stuff, whatever you call name brand today. Nike, Gucci. Yeah. Versace. Who the heck wants to spend twice the amount of money to wear somebody else's name on your clothes? I mean, what an idiot would do that. You have to be a moron. <laughs> I go to Goodwill. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just messing. I'm messing with Jasmine because she went out and bought a pair of tennis shoes, man. Tennis shoes. Almost $60. You know how many shoes she's got in her closet? 39 and oh, please. And That's and not and great. You want to a good year now. I put Two hours of moving. <laughs> Man, put something to cover my feet so I don't cut them on the glass and the gravel, and I'm happy. <laughs> put some clothes on me so I'm not running around naked, causing everybody to get sick. <laughs> don't tempt me. All right. Verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, plural. Yeah. Amen. Now think about this. He said, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels in Abraham's bosom. Then he would say he was buried. He was a poor man, a beggar. The rich man also died and was buried, but it didn't stop there. And in hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off. Now Abraham was dead many years before that, like 1,500 Yet he knew Abraham. He said he was tormented. He said in hell he lifted up his eyes being in torments. He could feel. You see your body is just the outward shell of what you really are. Your soul looks just like your body. It can feel. It can think. My brother-in-law was a drunk. And he was in a bad accident up by Morgantown, West Virginia. And they were working on him. And he was above his body watching them work on him. 
God spared him, soul came back. But you know the sad part is? He's still, he's still lost today. But he knows there's an afterlife. He knows it. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. He said, just dip the tip of his finger in the water. This is coffee, but it'll work. Oh, no. One drop is all he wanted. He didn't ask for a beer. He didn't ask for a bottle of liquor. He didn't ask for a cup of water or a DeSantis. <laughs> Amen. He just said, have Lazarus. The beggar, the one that sat at his gate that he refused to feed. And he says that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. So that they would, they which would pass from hence to you cannot. Neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. So imagine that. Here's the beggar in paradise, the rich man in hell, and between them is a great gulf. Well, where was that rich man wanting Lazarus to get that dip, uh, that little, uh, where did he want him to dip his finger in the water at? What is a gulf? I believe that gulf had water in it. Have you ever been so thirsty you didn't think you could stand it? You ever been that thirsty? Could you imagine being in hell and still that thirsty and see all that water and can't get to one drop of it? You see, there's two choices in life, heaven or hell. And it's up to you. God said that he chose the foolishness of preaching to say then that would believe. What do they preach? They preach that the Lord Jesus Christ is God Almighty and that he loved you so much for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. See, we're all going to live forever, but some are going to live in hell in the lake of fire. The other is going to be with the Lord and we'll, we'll be back on this earth one day during the millennial reign too. We'll have a body fashioned like unto his own glorious body. We'll rule over cities on the earth at that time. Amen. We'll be proclaiming the glorious gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the ages. That's what this Bible teaches. This Bible says that we were lost in Adam. And that's that void in your life. So in the book, it's not the garden. It's the God of the garden. When you get God, it fills that emptiness. Now, some people just love their sin so much that they don't want to get saved. See, the Bible says, Boast not thyself tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring. For what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and vanisheth away. So you don't know if you're going to live the night out. You could be dead before midnight. You could get hit head on when you leave here tonight. There was a man, his name was John Way. And when the Gulf War broke out, he was in the reserves. He was staff sergeant in the reserves. John worked with me over at CMC. I tried to preach to him on many occasions. He said, he, he called me geek. He's all like messing with me. He said, geek, my brother's a preacher, and he's always trying to shove it down my throat. I said, John, he's not trying to shove anything down your throat. He loves you. He believes that there's a hell, and if you die without Christ, you're going to that hell, and he's just trying to help you. Anyway, he got orders for Kuwait. And I preached to him one more time, and I said, John, I'm going to pray for you. Well, he went on over to Kuwait, and after his time was up, 
he came back, went back to work at CMC. On a Friday night, we were leaving the shop over here. And I still see him to this day. I'm over in this bay on the far side there, and he was coming by the grease pit. And uh, he said, have a good weekend, geek. And he looked over at me and he smiled. Monday morning, I went into work. Tommy Claiborne, the superintendent there, said, uh, did John come to your church Sunday? I said, no, why? He said, well, he got killed right up the street from your church, right up here. He said he was trying to help this person out of a ditch, and he had his Jeep hooked up, and he was laying on the ground hooking up cable, and this old woman come up there at night, went off the road and killed him. He said, I just figured he was at your church. Well, Wednesday, we came into church, and somebody found a pen on the front porch. It said, Crouch Tax Service, Wagner, South Carolina. That's where he lived. Then they walked in and they said, hey, who left the money in the offering plate? There was $240-some dollars laying in the offering plate. You see, that Sunday night, we didn't have church. We used to have church every Sunday, and that Sunday night, we didn't have it. He had come by to go to church. We weren't here. He went past the circle. You know where the circle is on Nazareth. And up the hill, started up the hill there towards the welding place. And that's where he got killed. Last time I saw him alive was Friday night. Sunday night he was dead. If I'd have had church that night, he might still be alive. But I believe old John got saved and he wanted to surprise me. And he showed up and since we weren't here, he left the tithe. That's a good evidence you got saved. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But see, he didn't plan on dying that night. I mean, he just come back from a war zone. After spending his whole tour over there, he come back from a war zone. And he died right up there. I told you Sunday, or was it Wednesday, about Carolyn Hodges. She come around the curb down here, flipped over, landed in the creek when I lived in that house across the street, the yellow house there. I got down there. She's laid out on the roof <gasps> like that. She clipped the trees and flipped, dropped in there. And she got EMS came and everything. She ended up at the hospital. And my wife and I went over there to talk to her about the Lord. She said she was saved, that she was saved a long time ago. But when they reached under to check her heart rate, they pulled out cocaine. She was shacked up with a man down here. After she got out of the hospital, I went down and talked to her again. She was ashamed to come to the door because she had her boyfriend there. And the boyfriend come out. And, but a, it wasn't maybe a month later, maybe a little bit longer. I can't remember now. He called me up. He said, I want you to know that Carolyn passed away. And I knew you cared about her. But as much as we cared about her, we couldn't stop her from making the wrong choice. And as much as we care about you, you know, I pray for every one of you every day. Every day. You know why I do this here on Thursday night? Because I care where you're going, whether you do or not. I could lay home and relax. We could save all the money that we spend on food. But we care. We care. The question is, do you care where you're going? Jonathan Edwards in the 1700s preached a message on sinners in the hands of an angry God. If your brother said, I'm going to die so my sister won't. And then we just laughed at him and mocked him after he was dead. Wouldn't that upset you? What do you think is going on when you reject Jesus Christ? When God the Father gave his son and made him suffer on the cross and in hell. Jesus went to hell so you and I wouldn't have to. And you just throw it in his face. You see, deep down in here, 
you know there's a heaven and a hell. Anybody beside me ever been to court? And me and Teresa. <laughs> Anybody? You been to court? All right. Didn't you feel kind of intimidated when you walked in there and the judge came in? Didn't that bother you? You know why? Because deep down in here, you know there's a judgment and we're going to a judgment. And if the blood of Jesus Christ has not cleansed you from your sin, you're going to be sentenced to death and hell for eternity. You have a choice while you're alive. But the first thing you've got to do is believe this Bible. If you don't believe it, go on and live your life because you'll never get saved anyway because he that cometh to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them which diligently seek him. Amen. So you got the only decision you got to make is this word of, is this the word of God or isn't it? Is it true or isn't it? And do I want to go to hell or I want to live forever with the Lord? And do I want that peace in my soul? Do I want that that joy in here? You see, growing up, especially in this day and age, young people like you have been through it. You've got pedophiles out there that want to molest you. You've got weirdos that want to get your confidence so they could use your body to please your, to pleasure themselves. Amen. You've got young boys out there that just want you for your body, and you've got weird women out there that want you for your body. Amen. The Bible says his mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. The question is, what are you going to do with this man called Jesus? And you know, the, the one thing is, we used to get around the people that believe what we believe so we wouldn't have a conscience. But who told you it was wrong to lie? Your conscience. God said he wrote his law in your heart. He told you it's wrong to commit fornication. To steal. You already knew all that. What about some of us older ones when we took the little girls in the back seat of the car and went to park somewhere? We knew it was wrong. That's why we did it at night. That's why we found a secluded place. How many girls' lives have been ruined because of somebody like you or me? I told Tim a couple stories today about what I saw on the road, some of the things I saw on the road. Young men. Two young men and an old man. An old man driving the car and the two young men in the back. On I-95 coming out of Miami, Florida. Broad daylight. What that one boy was doing to the other boy. And when they passed me, I passed them again. And I cut over in front of them and I slammed on the brakes. <laughs> They whip back out. They come up there shaking their fist at me and everything. And I held a Bible out the window. <laughs> I saw a young woman with a man at 2 o'clock in the morning. And she was not dressed. And he's driving. With her dome light on. Pulled right up beside me on I-26 going into Charleston. I woke up real quick. I was falling asleep. I was like, they shot off the road. What he was doing to her and what she was doing to him, the shame to speak of. Do you think he cared about her? No, he didn't care. You ought to see the people in New York City that rejected Christ, that turned into drunks. I'd come down Canal Street. In New York City, they'd be laying on the sidewalk, look like mangy old wolves, all full of street dirt and dust and bloodshot eyes. And they come up and stop light to my truck and said, hey, 
You said yesterday that you would give me a quarter tomorrow, and tomorrow is today. <laughs> These are lawyers and stuff that turn to drunks. I go into the Bronx, to the farmer's market. <laughs> There'd be these women out there just pull their clothes up and everything, selling their bodies to anybody that come along. I was in a truck stop in Calumet City, Illinois. A nine-year-old girl knocked on my truck, asked me if I wanted company. Nine years old. You know, the sad part is she wouldn't have been out there if people hadn't been taking her services, nine years old. This was back in the eighties, nine years old, destroying her life. And her mother and dad was their pimp for the love of money. The root, the love of money is the root to all evil. Just to get money, you put your little nine year old daughter out there. People will use you and abuse you. The Bible says that the thoughts and intents of men's heart was only evil continually. That's why God destroyed it in Noah's day. And he said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. You look out here today, all these pedophiles, all these children that's being used and abused. You know why? Well, sometimes it's because the parents put them in daycare and the day care people. I mean, even in the big churches, they'd have had child molesters come in as youth pastors. Youth pastors. We don't have youth pastors here. They had it in a couple of big churches around here. Look at the stories on the Boy Scouts, the Catholic priest, just using you. And here's what the boys will tell you, girls. I love you. See, they'll tell you what you want to hear. And if you love me, you would. And if you did and something happened, and you had a bun in the oven, all of a sudden they wouldn't love you no more. But as long as they can use you, they'll keep telling you they love you. See, people are wicked. There's only one person that really loves you sincerely, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. And he Amen. loved you enough to die for you. Amen. Amen. You don't have to go to hell. God said he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You're going to have to believe that book or you'll never believe. You can have your opinion. You say, well, preacher, what about all these other religions? You think climbing up on a mountain in Moundsville, West Virginia, to this big green statue of a fat, ball-headed man that you could rub his belly and that's going to get you to heaven? Or who knows? You might come back as a dog or a cat. Hey, man. You know what I'm talking about? That. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> yes, sir. No, or well, you can live with the Lord Jesus Christ for an eternity. Somebody that really does have your interest at heart and cares about you. Amen. Well, that's all I have for this evening. I know I went over, but, uh, I wanted to know what you thought. The Bible says, search the scripture for in them. You think you have eternal life. Search the scriptures. You want an answer. This is where you better go. And you know what? There's a song we sing. I know not how the spirit moves, creating faith in me. But he said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're not in the word of God, you can go out and look at all the encyclopedias and all the apologetics and all the other stuff you want. The spirit's on the book. That's where you need to be. Amen. Amen.
All right, Tim, dismiss us, please. And bless the food. Dear Father, we thank you for letting us uh, come here tonight as we get to worship you and to get to truly know you better as we uh, are your vessels to use that do us what you want to bring forth your children to you, Lord, that we may um, be fruitful and to you, Lord. Lord, we just uh, bless food our bodies and just thank you for allowing us to be here again. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.